Hello everyone. In this video we ride the Cross Washington mountain bike route, which starts in the tiny town of La Push on the Pacific coast and ends at the Washington-Idaho border near the small town of Tico. Getting to the start point is a little more complicated with this one. First we fly to Seattle with our bikes on August 22nd, then rent a minivan to get us to Port Angeles. I drop Michelle off at the bus station, then drop the rental car off at the local airport and ride four miles back to beat her. From there we use the local bus system to get us to Forks. Then another smaller bus that was actually pretty sketchy for our bikes as we watched them almost bounce off the rack. And here we are at the start. It's about 2 p.m. and wondering what we are about to get ourselves into. Our nervousness quickly goes away as we start pedaling, ready to enjoy the venture into the unknown. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Today was an easy, shorter day of riding with our first half on pavement and second on dirt roads with no cars, just us. We had to take the original route due to the updated section being closed for road repairs. What an excellent way to start this adventure as we found a good wild camp spot by a small creek in the middle of the Olympic Mountains with no one else around. Continuing the climb from yesterday up and over Sore Thumb Peak, enjoying the solitude of the Pacific Northwest Forest. Crossing the Olympic Highway 101, we take the Mount Muller Trail to the Olympic Discovery Trail.
northern end of Lake Crescent, we hop off the route and make a stop at Log Cabin Resort, hoping to get lunch, but the restaurant is closed. However, they do have snacks. It was a steep climb to the start of the Olympic Discovery Trail adventure route, which is around 20 miles of super flowy single track. It's only day two, and I can tell you all right now, this is really going to be an awesome adventure across Washington. I know we're passing by See the shadows of our own Apart from where we are We still believe and raise our hearts We're locked up alone Going nowhere, waiting for the dawn and just like shooting stars, sleeping flames until Our stop for the night is at the Elwha Dam RV Park, just off the route. Nice private campground, except for the overnight car noise. We're back on the Olympic Discovery Trail, heading to Port Angeles. How many lives we live Voice between the heaven and earth How many times we die Trying for the birth without different masks No matter where we go Souls adrift, let us say goodbye riding past the bus station where we were just two days ago, sitting there all nervous, worrying if we would even make it to the start of this adventure. Turning away from the coast, the climbing begins and we will not stop for the rest of the day. We decided to take the shorter day today to help balance out the climbing tomorrow and stop at the Dungeness campground. We got here pretty early and had plenty of time to relax and enjoy this beautiful area. It was a steep and long 16 mile, 3600 foot climb up the Bon John Pass. But then we were rewarded with the lower big Quillacine Trail to the town of Quillacine. It was really fun. This is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
lunch, stock up on supplies, and make our way to a campsite along the route that we found at the old golf course in Port Ludlow. Pretty epic day today with the most daily climbing we will have on this trip. It rained a little as we were packing up this morning. Looking forward to today as we will be taking the ferry from Kingston to Edmonds where we will be meeting our sister-in-law, Dion, who lives in Portland. Dion was married to Michelle's brother, Dean, who passed away from cancer in late 2017. We miss you, Dean. Life is short and is one of the reasons why we get out there and explore as much as we can. The section following the Hood Canal floating bridge was a total surprise to us. The Port Gamble Forest and North Kitsap area have some really awesome single track trails that this route only touches on. We will be back sometime to ride all of them. with Dion and Edmonds and make our way to Bothell where we'll be staying at a hotel for the night. Troy the designer of the route does a masterful job of carving a way through the urban jungle of Seattle. So much fun and so many steep short climbs. We have Dion riding with us again today as we continue through the urban jungle east of Seattle. Right before entering Redmond Preserve, we meet Mike from Woodenville, who is out on his local ride. He decides to ride with us for a little while. It's time for Dion to make her way back to the hotel and we say our goodbyes. Thank you for meeting up with us and we enjoyed every minute of it. Mike rode with us for a little bit longer before heading back home. Mike, it was awesome meeting you and thank you for riding with us. It's just the two of us now as we make our way to North Bend for lunch and resupply.
The rest of the day is spent riding the Snoqualmie Valley Trail, which is on an old railroad bed and gentle grade all the way up to the Snoqualmie Tunnel. This is a really pretty section with lots of people out riding bikes and also rock climbing. Riding through this 2.4 mile long tunnel is one of the highlights of this trip for sure, as we have never ridden such a long tunnel before. We make it to Roaring Creek Campground just before sunset. It was a long day, but totally fun. Little do we know the next few days are going to be even more of a challenge. You're young, no one tells you anything They just hope you don't make the same After the tunnel yesterday, we really noticed a change in climate as we transitioned from less green forests to a more sparse, dry environment. So far, the temperature has been in the 80s, which is pretty cool by our standards. The next couple of days are not going to be like that. So we got going right at sunrise. When you get close to Clay Ellum, you have two options with this route. You can stay low or go high. We chose the go high option that takes you over the highest point of this entire ride, Mission Peak. Right after the small town of Roslyn, it's directly on a single track, and oh boy is it steep. Actually the rest of the day's climbs are really steep and had you begging for a reasonable slope of 10%. We stayed at this campground back in 2010 when road touring the Sierra Cascades route. 
so it was kind of neat to stay here again. The campground has not changed at all, but the car traffic on Highway 97 sure has. We woke up to 40 degree weather, not knowing that the end of today would be over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It was a hard day at the office. The steep climbs and heat at the end really made us work for this one. We were wondering at this point why we chose the high option over the low. They are both 80 miles, but the high has 12,000 feet of climbing, while the low only has 7,000. We are carrying a combined total of 8 liters of water and made it all the way to the end point today. There was a nice spring to filter water about halfway up the climb and could have started with less water, but you all know how that goes. The one time you try to save on water weight is the time you cannot find water. I did not get it on camera, but I almost ran into a smaller black bear in this section. Luckily it started running just in time and darted off into the bush. We had to make a quick stop at Full Circle Bicycle Shop in town to replace Michelle's brake rotors and pads. The shop owner had all the parts and let me use his tools to make the repairs. We got another hotel to escape the heat and help in getting an early start tomorrow. We got our earliest start yet, though probably still not early enough given the day we would have in 100 degree plus weather again. Wait, 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 wait. There are so many different breeds. I just need to find one that fits I know I don't show, but I'm glad you came The infamous Rock Island Climb awaits us. The Rock Island Climb is not to be taken lightly, as it's a really steep and exposed 3.5 mile climb, and in late August, you don't want to be on this in the afternoon, with the hot sun baking you to a crisp as you crawl up the mountain. I know I don't show it, but I'm glad you came. Yeah. I know I don't show it, but I'm glad you came. I know it does not look like it, but today was by far the hardest day for us on this route. We are still feeling yesterday, then you add in today, well, the struggle bus just stopped for us and we got on. Yeah. It's just crazy how the world works. You are basically in the middle of a desert, and then comes this beautiful waterfall. It's just amazing.
made it to the hotel, but it's one of those days you will remember for quite some time. Did y'all notice how different the scenery was today? This is one of the things that makes this route so enjoyable. Originally, we wanted to try to make it all the way to Ritzville, which is a little over 100 miles. Don't think that's going to happen with another 100 degree day. So we come up with a new plan to take a shorter day today and stop in Moses Lake with the hopes we can make up the mileage in the coming days. This will also set us up better mileage wise for ending in towns the following two days. Fingers crossed this new plan works. I gotta tell y'all, we are so happy to not be riding through this on the weekend. We get to Moses Lake before lunchtime and head to the Japanese garden to check it out. Then grab lunch in downtown before heading to the hotel to relax and get ready for one more day of super hot weather. It's another super early start in the dark, but well worth it. I think we can consider ourselves lucky at the carp crossing. We have read of riders having to wade through waist deep water here. It's another beautiful sunrise. These never get old and is our favorite time to ride. We had really bad timing with the crop duster or the pilot was playing games with us. 
as he kept making runs in the same direction as we were riding. Right after Warden, we pick up the Palos to Cascade State Park Trail, which is slow going. Just remember you need to have the right mindset to enjoy this section. We stopped in a small town for lunch and as you can see from the tumbleweed rolling through town, we have a headwind for most of the day, which I guess is not that bad because it's helping cool things down. Oh no, tumbleweeds again. Listen closely as I'm filming this fake horse, and you can hear a real horse neigh in the background. Guess what? It's going to be back in the 80s today. The heat wave is over and we're so excited. We just might pull this adventure off and make it to Tico. Though our ultimate endpoint is Missoula, Montana, it's still going to be hard and we need to start ramping up the mileage if we're going to make our flight home. Another thing adding to the fun factor is all the gates, some locked and some not. A free permit is required to ride this section, and a gate code is provided.
If you haven't already noticed, we are in a major wheat producing area. According to a gentleman we talked to, this area has the most fertile wheat producing fields in the entire world. We made it to town right before a storm front moved through and watched it pass while eating takeout from the only restaurant in town. We are only 20 miles from Tico and enjoying our last beautiful morning in Washington. We ride into town and go directly to the only restaurant open to enjoy our second breakfast while listening to the farmers complain about their combines. And we talk to Roy, who works for the city. Where are you guys headed? This is where we are going to leave you all, as it seems fit because this is the end of the Cross Washington route. A big thank you goes out to Troy Hopwood, who designed this amazing route. I provided a link to the official website along with bikepacking.com. If you all are wondering, the Great Divide is still our favorite, but this one comes in a really close second. It's more physically demanding and technical than the Great Divide, so come prepared and pack light. But what you get in return is amazing scenery that is constantly changing and the single track sections are a blast. You can go straight to this road. We hope you all enjoyed this video. And if so, please consider subscribing to our channel to not miss the next video as we try to make it to Missoula, Montana. Thanks again and ride on.